Welcome to Florida Men on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron, the podcast where Floridians discuss the crazy but true stories that always seem to take place in Florida. The world. world. We've changed? Why would we change? The whole world. The whole world. No. The world men on world man. I guess eventually. The world man on world man. Eventually we're going to run out of stories. I don't think so. I doubt it. No. There's been at least... 350 people that have lived in Florida. So if we can just each At tell least. their story. Yep. Yeah. That sounds uh, good. And three of us are here. So that equals 7%. Right. The math seems strong with it. And I also feel We're like strong uh, with the math. we need to break some ice. Breaking that ice. Breaking that ice. Already? Yeah, there he is. Break it. Guys, yeah. let me unfold this letter. Okay. It's unfold sealed it. with ink. Okay. And a kiss. You know the deal. Mm-hmm. So we have some listener mail. Yep. Okay, this guy's name is Tyrone. Okay. What's up, Tyrone? What are these nosy people wanting to know this week? Tyrone says, do you really read these letters on the air? No. No. And do you have anything interesting to talk about? No. No. And what's the worst date or blind date you've ever been on? And? There's the meat. Uh Uh-oh. Which one of you has the longest socks? And? Oh, Would you guys read this on air, and could I arm wrestle one of you? No. Yes? I mean, you could, but you wouldn't win. No. No. I think you arm wrestle three of us. Yeah. Yeah. You get butt kicked. We've always said that. If you want to arm wrestle one of us, us. you got to wrestle all three of us. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah, Somebody's going to be punching you in the groin. Yeah, because Greg doesn't arm wrestle. No. So he doesn't even count. No. He doesn't have arms. Mm-mm. As far as the longest socks, I've got on some uh, ankle socks. Um, they got gold tips on them. Yep. Oof. Richie. Mm-hmm. Cameron's got on ankle socks. Yep. Uh, Josh's got on no socks. Ankles. Bare ankles. Josh got good looking ankles though. I always tell you guys, you guys kiss my ankles when I walk in this house. He does say that. Mm-hmm. So worst date or blind date? I don't know. I've had some bad ones. I uh, tell us about it. Yeah. Okay. Let's so, go with you first. I'm tired of starting this old icebreaker all right so in high school uh there was this girl i thought was uh she i thought she was cute mm-hmm. sounds cute yeah i wasn't yeah. right i was beautiful yeah, yeah. i wasn't writing letters her. to my mom about her or anything but she okay. was cute you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i think so so uh we went Describe to Describe her though we made plans to go to islands of adventure um and give, give the world wow, that's a that's a big first date you have give to pay the world for an that. idea of what islands of adventure is you're Roller assuming coasters. our listeners are native mm-hmm. that's true but we've got some from birkin faso right that's yeah. right so okay so uh islands of adventure is roller coasters it's food uh theme park it's a universal theme park it's yeah. attached to universal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. universal studios universal studios they paid right. you to say it bro you I can know. at least say it <laughs> we got it that's true our contract is complete we have to okay. say it out loud uh, no, so um, I picked her up, and at the time I was driving this uh, Celica. I think the listeners have heard about the Celica. They have yeah. heard about it, and was they've heard about the abuse that you've done to pre-op it. Pre-op or post-op? Post-op. So it had <laughs> the Taco Bell dog on it? I show up with a Taco Bell dog glued to the hood Epoxied. of my Celica. Nice. Sir. Epoxied. And um, the Celica, when I turned, made this clicking noise that sounded like a machine gun going off. Uh-huh. Only one direction? Uh, both ways. Okay. Uh, yeah, both ways. Cameron, um, what is that? Nice. That's the, that's the noise it was. Is that make. what it was? I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say that was um, upper control arms, the upper turning turning controllers. Yeah, yeah, that's not a thing. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what uh, I thought it was, but I don't know how to replace those. So I pull oh, up in, yeah, I that's pull an up easy in a driveway. Job. Yeah, because they don't exist. It's pretty <laughs> yeah. easy. <laughs> and so when I pick her up, uh-huh. uh, I don't know. She did a double take at the car, like in the driveway. So like, I knew, like already. I get to ride in this? No, not at all. It was more. It was more like I have to ride in this. Yeah, it was like I can smell the fumes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this Amen. is gonna suck. Whoa. Uh, so she said, "Lord's name in vain." Yeah. So she gets in, and her brother and her brother's friend are out there playing hoops. Oh. And as I'm pulling out of the driveway, it's making that clicking noise. Shirtless. Yeah, and she rolls the window <laughs> down and sarcastically goes. He's got a brand new car. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, while I'm sitting right there. Okay. So right away, I'm like, okay, well, that is what it is. Cam, what would you do? 
I, I'd probably drive away. Yeah. You'd be like, not worth my time. Yeah, with her in the car? No. No. No, I, I Dump wasn't. Her. Leave her. I don't think I had that much confidence back this, then. This story reeks of desperation. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's no, not I was, the cologne you wear. I was desperate. I paid for the whole date. Mm. Yeah, see, that's big money. That's and back big then, money for a horse scoop. Yeah, poop. Back poop then, scooper. I'm only making 60 bucks a week. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot oh. of poop. That's and a ticket. That's I'm taking her ticket. to a theme park. Oh, uh, so we go there. She makes me ride roller coasters. Mm-hmm. And I, I told her flat out, like, I don't want to ride roller coasters. I'm not good at it. I get sick. Like right when she got in the car? Yeah, she gets in the car. She's like, uh, sweet car. And I go, I don't want to ride roller coasters. <laughs> She's like, this guy's got a brand new car. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I'm already in a bad mood, and we had planned to leave the theme park and go see M. Night Shyamalan's movie Signs. Nice. With Mel Gibson. Don't oh, tell yeah. me about it. I'm still, I, I won't. It's it's still so on my Netflix good. list. It's uh, Okay, so everybody in it is deaf, Okay, and they all speak in sign language. Yeah. Okay, nice. That's what I, was, that's what I thought. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I'm really excited to see the movie. I'm a huge M. Night Shyamalan fan, and we're like halfway through at the point. It's getting so tense. It's really good. And she leans over to me. Okay. Yeah. Mm, no, I wish. Skis, skis. And she goes, um, I feel like the spirit of God isn't that a fear. And I'm afraid right now and I want to walk out. And I was just did, about to lose it. Did she pick up one of those Christian tracks in the bathroom? She yeah, must have. Chick tracks. Chick, who who, who chick. speaks that way, first of all? Did you I go, just realized if she's listening, she's going to know 100%. <laughs> did you go, what I'm talking about. Your interpretation of the movie is so much deeper than mine. I don't know yeah. what the hell you're talking about. With signs in my Shyamalan? Yeah, so she goes, I feel like the Lord. Uh, well, no, she, I think what she was trying to say in normal terms is that she was afraid, and she feels like that's not natural, so I she like wanted that to she leave. she spoke it to you in Christian dialogue also, not, hey, Dum dum. I'm scared. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. probably didn't help that she was like, yeah, I don't know. Was she wearing a nun's outfit? No, she should have been. <laughs> um, but so, anyways, I'm like, I'm not going to just leave her in the foyer because she wants to leave. So then we have to. There's video games out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Street been fine. Fighter three. Yeah. yeah, but if, she, if she's speaking about fear can... from M Night Shyamalan, she's not going to play Mortal Kombat on an arcade. Pac Man. Oh, there's definitely uh, Crazy Taxi. <laughs> yeah, who knows? We drove back to Lakeland. Get, and, get, get, uh, get, get, get. And we were just yeah, exactly the whole way home. The Every whole time, way home, a car breaking down. You're trying down. to make a straight shot, so you so, you so I don't have to turn the wheel. Uh-huh. Yeah, I dropped her off, and those boys still playing hoops, huh? They're still playing hoops, uh-huh. and they, they heard me coming a mile away in my in my cell. Click, 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 click. So that was my worst day. How about you guys? That wasn't that bad. I uh, mean, the Lord steered you away from the end of the movie that you wanted to see. The Lord steered me away from her. Oh. Uh, which I'm grateful for. But I'm still paying uh, dividends on that freaking date. Well, we just lost a listener. Yeah, yeah sorry. It turned out that would uh, that would have ended up being Miss America 2008. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want to give away her name, but that is true. She went on to do some great things. So, uh, All right. So who else mm. had a, a I've one? never had a bad date. I've okay. had uh, all good dates. Yep. Okay. All ended uh, with the girl saying, would you date me a second time? And every time you said? I'm saving myself for marriage. (laughs) I'm waiting till... You're a second date only when you're married. Yeah. That makes sense. I know what happens on a second date. Right. I've seen movies. Right. A lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Never Been Kissed is one of my favorites. Yep. You said I'm saving myself for Wayne's little sister. Uh Uh-huh. Can't wait. That sounds weird. (laughs) That's what happened. Once she gets 17 and a half and we do Habitat for Humanity together... That is what, holy crap, I forgot about that. The Lord. And how old were you, Josh? 28? 37, I think. (laughs) Mid to late teens. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing's as influential as an older male on a younger female. Yeah. Hey, girl, you want to be cool? Come hang out with me. Come hang out with me. I'm living with my grandma right now. Our parents listen to this podcast. What? Oh, gosh. They're going to know everything. They're going to know how soon you guys actually started dating Uh-oh. because they think you guys started dating way later than that. Um, all this has been a lie. Everything, Everybody knows that. Okay. Yeah, it's so all been a lie. So I went on a date one time. I was set up with a girl. This girl was in car culture in the tuner scene because Fast and the Furious had just came out. Okay. Oh, okay. Everybody yeah. was yeah. racing and stuff. And so uh, I didn't have a cool tuner car. She did. So... The, the blind date was set up, and she picked me up. Okay. So I get in the car, and I go, well, you don't look like my future wife, so. Let's just go ahead and call it quits. Yeah. It's not off to a good start, amen? Yeah. 
Amen. So, Fear of um, the Lord shall not have hold here. What did, what was the track? Nothing like that. I believe the spirit <laughs> of God is not that of fear. There you go. Wow. I just twisted it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we went to Bennigan's. Everybody knows about Bennigan's, oh, right? Oh. Uh-huh. Are they still that, around? No, they're not. But that sandwich, the, the Monte Cristo. Tell us about it. Massive Guys, meat. Guys, we should shut down right now. And go, go get one. Go deep fry us a, uh, a, a sandwich. A pastrami corned Sammy. beef. Well, let's just, let's just wrap it up. Corn beef. Go eat. Is Bennigan's like, still around? Is it around at all? I haven't seen a Bennigan's in like 20 years. Not the one in our town. My Guys. dad wouldn't let us go to Bennigan's Why? after he got food poisoning. What? Really? On, on mushrooms at Bennigan's. So. It, it doesn't Oof. continue. Like once someone gets sick, I don't the know. restaurant doesn't continue the trend of yep. someone getting sick. The trust is just not there anymore. Yeah, that is true. Gosh. All right. Anyways, go. So um, the date went so well at Bennigan's. Uh-huh. You know, you try to make a good impression. Oh, yeah. So you don't eat all your delicious Bennigan sandwich. Right. Because you're having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, this you girl... Got, you don't want to get powdered sugar all over your, God, your clothes. Yeah. What a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. the, the the creator of this Monte Cristo is. He's probably dead from a heart attack. God, for real. But I love him. Worth yeah. it. And God loves him. God bless yeah. him. Because he really had God's ear. What a ministry. Mm. Coming up with fried foods. Yeah, deep fried sandwich with powdered yeah. sugar and like a <laughs> jelly, a sweet jelly yeah. on it. Normally, you'd only find that at like a state fair. Yeah, but, that yes. is, no, that's a, that's one hundred percent correct. Food. But that's a, that's a state fair. Bennigan's food. made it oh, I'm real so life. Hungry right now. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, tell your freaking story. So I can go all eat. I've had yeah. is cotton candy <laughs> and rice noodles, and it doesn't fill me up at all. <laughs> so, um, so the date went well. We talked about five minutes of the time while we looked past each other at the TVs. So yeah, that's always a good sign. And. Uh, she was so confident in not impressing me that when the guy came to give us a check, obviously I paid because... A gentleman. Yeah, because I was making like $8 an hour. Wow. That's not bad. Yeah, I was nice. killing it, bro. And uh, that he said, do you want a box? And naturally, as a gentleman, I said no, because mm-hmm. I'm like, I got so much money. Yeah. I don't need you don't to eat box scraps. this food. Up. Right. I'm not going to re-eat food. She says yes to hers. And then, yes to mine. Ouch. <laughs> As in, he's taking his scraps home. As in, she's taking my scraps oh, home. Oh. Taking she all took the food. your leftover food. She took my two halves, my two quarters of Monte Cristo. She was so confident in not impressing me. She took the rest of her food home and my half of my delicious wow. sandwich. She was like, if I've got to put up with you for two hours, yeah. I'm getting three meals out of this. Yeah. She then dropped me off in her Hyundai <laughs> Tiburon. <laughs> Oh yeah, and um, and let me go back out in the wild. I mean, she's like, yeah. "Go, you buck and bronco." Yeah, her Can loss. Re- you're Catch gonna make someone happy. Yeah, her loss. Yeah, honestly, it, she smacked me on the butt. <laughs> yep, and said, "You're out." She said, yeah. "Good talk, kid." Yeah, she said, "God bless." That's the way most of my dates ended, actually, with a smack on the butt and a God bless. Yeah. Yep. He'd pull up, drop me off, slap me on he, the butt. Pardon? He? I'm oh, sorry. Whoa, the Lord. The yeah, truth comes. Day. Yeah, sorry about that. We don't we don't judge. No. My wife's gonna be finding out something on this episode. Whoa. Yep. Lost another listener. Because well, Wayne's <laughs> Wayne's wife? Yeah. Cameron, did you have a uh, a bad Any date, date or a, Let's or a blind see. date? Well, my wife met her my, at uh, uh, kindergarten. Yeah, middle school. Whoa. We were high school sweethearts, so oh, I gotta be careful this here. It's the worst. But when we were engaged I'm falling asleep. I just I bought a new car. Okay. Wanted to take it on the road. Uh-huh. Yeah, you did. Get get some mileage on it. So I planned a date to take her over to Cape Canaveral okay, area for, for a rocket launch like you do. Now, that would have been a good idea. Okay. But we went to see a lighthouse. Okay. Because okay. I'm thinking, you know. Instead of a rocket romantic, launch, yeah. once in a lifetime event, let's go to a permanent fixed structure. <laughs> That looks like a rocket. Okay, it looks like a rocket. But I get it. It's light, a rocket light, you can go inside. A lighthouse <laughs> inherently feels romantic, I yeah, feel like. exactly. Yeah, so you were alone. You probably planned at a romantic dinner alone yeah, in this lighthouse. Yeah, I closed lighthouse. down the lighthouse. <laughs> no visitors. <laughs> <laughs> the candlelit dinner was extremely bright. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here's the issue. I didn't know okay. that she did not like lighthouses. Now, I think that she likes the, looking at them from right. afar. Okay. But as soon as we got into the lighthouse uh-huh. and start climbing up with all the other visitors there, tight quarters. Oh, so you didn't close the lighthouse. I didn't. No. no oh. I, I, I wish I had. Uh, tight quarters, 
uh-huh. spiraling staircase, Spiral lots staircase. of people. Yeah. Very hot. My Oof. wife, pan- huh? panic Steamy. attack. Oh my God. Almost passes out. What? Sitting on the floor in the middle of the stairs. People yeah. trying to get around her. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, I don't, I don't just, know what to do. What, you can't drag her up. No, no. I was just trying to direct traffic at that point. Yeah. Uh, I got someone down here. Yeah. And uh, Go so around. we get to the top. Wow. You she, forced her. Uh, I did. Yeah. Okay, she has a panic attack and pushed halfway, her up. and he's like, we got to <laughs> see the top. I got to see the we top. We were almost to the top. I yeah. paid $35. We look around for a while. She's okay. like, okay. She's feeling confident. Feeling better. Uh-huh. We start coming down. Boom. Panic attack. Same Whoa. thing. Yeah. Hated it. At the same spot? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there was something about that spot. probably just a haunted spot. Were, yeah. the, were there rails to hang on to? I think it was just a wall. Oh. T- you tried to oh, so, uh, put oh, your hand okay, on so, so really that you don't... Phobic. Yeah, it was close. Oh, okay. It was real close. I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Bro, so, if you had some soaps on, you could just jump on that rail and slide all the way down. That That's true. Yeah. Y'all Here's remember the, soaps? The I best part soaps. about it... I love them. They were so heavy. The best part about it is afterwards <laughs> we got to drive an hour back home oh so well, after like, the bad date <laughs> you drove an hour to torture me <laughs> yeah and you still made me walk up uh-huh the remainder half and then walk back down yep and then an hour in silence on the way home mm. yeah and she still married you yeah she did she still married you she's yep. carrying your child right now she is how was she little boy so she was silent while y'all were making out on the drive home? Yes, exactly. Mm. Who Love at first wow. sight. Love at first sight. No, I get that because I, I, I'm i really claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. And I've never stopped in the middle of, the, of a walkway and cried because of it. Um, oh, well. So way to make her feel worse about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's three listeners. Think, Wayne has kicked off tonight. Yeah. Sarah, my ex-girlfriend. Yep. And my and ex-wife, apparently. The claustrophobia yeah. wife. community. Yep. And the whole claustrophobic community yeah. has left us. Well, do we have any headlines? We do have some headlines. Ooh, Wait, who, some what was that guy's name ones. again? Tyrone? Yeah. Thank you for writing in, Tyrone. For the letter? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. yeah. All right. So this... He sky wrote it. He wrote it on the... Yeah. With a plane? Yeah. This Big headline ups. comes to Big us ups. from <laughs> Chow from Lakeland, Florida. Hey, Chow. What's okay. up, Chow? Uh, Florida man's rocket-propelled grenade launcher confiscated by TSA at I'm airport. Gonna, I'm going to have to put this together in my mind. Let's here. do it. Rocket propelled grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. Confiscated by TSA at the airport. Hmm. So this man was trying to was not try- trying to, he did put a grenade launcher into his checked luggage. Oh my gosh. And he had it disassembled in four pieces, but tried to get it through the check, uh, what do you? I don't know. The, the, I guess the, okay. yeah, the, the baggage. Security claim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, through TSA. I get okay. So grenades are only as good as far as you can throw them, right? Right. So well, you have you make you a launch gr- them. You make a grenade launcher, right? Right. Right. But that's still only as good as the grenade launcher can launch them. Right. Right. So then you make the grenade grenade launcher rocket propelled. So right. then you you're launching the grenade launcher. It's getting close, and then it's throwing the grenade right no yeah. i'm gonna say no oh yeah. i thought he had it figured out no i don't think that's right okay i, I think that's uh, okay though you take it from me i'm an inventor <laughs> this guy doesn't sound like an anything <laughs> so what happened is he get arrested no so he it obviously put off a bunch of alarms no, when it was dumb, going dumb. through you ship it in separate TSA parts. yeah and FedEx. They put it, you know, they realized what it was. They realized um, what it was? They did. <laughs> they go, yeah. this is a rocket grenade. <laughs> this is a rocket, rocket grenade, grenade launcher. Grenade launcher? Yeah. It Textbook. also, it, it, it had a replica oh, grenade God. with it. Oh, my gosh. And Wait, so they, it, they ended up um, confiscating it. Uh-huh. And he didn't, he didn't even miss his flight. What? They let him, yeah. Yeah, but he lost the grenade launcher. He lost the grenade launcher. Oh, it's well, not yeah. illegal to check weapons. No, it's not. But you are not allowed to check uh, grenade Rocket. launchers, oh. apparently, or anything that resembles grenade launchers. That explains or military why my bag nature. of water balloons that were gre- that look like grenades yeah. got confiscated. Well, you got sent to, to jail for that. Well, just for a day, but then I punched my way out. Yeah, you did. Yeah, TSA says you can't have any kind of military replica or realistic looking oh that really military weapons the 
replica. So he, so he wasn't trying to start trouble. He, he no, genuinely was so. just trying to ship his grenade yeah. launcher. Mm-hmm. And then, well, he wasn't starting trouble there. He was starting trouble wherever he was going. Yep. Yeah, well, now there's a war without him. Yeah. So way he, to go, Goofus. He's just punching his way through. Yeah. He made it through. Well, thank you, Chow, for sending that yeah. in. I've got uh, another interesting little short story. So does yeah. that go to auction or something? How do we get our hands on that? Uh, you don't. Uncle Sam keeps it. I'll, I'll, I'll send an email. It's got to go somewhere. See what we can do. They're not going to sh- sh- launch it into space with the grenade launcher. They might. They might put it in that lighthouse. Oh, God bless. God bless. All right. So this man. Yeah. A new Florida man. Okay. Ooh. He decides to rob his boss. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he. It's what we th- dream about every day. Who right? doesn't? Right. Finds a rare coin coin collection. Okay. Worth thirty three thousand dollars. Okay. Stole it from his boss. Yeah. Okay. Took nice. it to a coin star machine no. at Walmart. No. no. You gotta take it to the pawn TV show Discovery. <laughs> yeah. And then he, stars? he makes it. So deal it's with worth thirty three k. He puts it in coin it star. It is worth thirty three thousand dollars. Rare coin star rare, takes a percentage. Rare coins. He took it to a Coinstar machine and got two 12-packs of beer after putting $33,000 oh, in man. rare coins and getting $30. He bought Bush beer. I guarantee it. I don't think that he... I'm not sure if he realized what he did. I, they were, I guess, rare quarters. So they were quarters. But they okay. looked like normal quarters. Okay. I guess so. They, I guess they were 1843. Ooh, yeah. So but, he, he could have cashed them in for 33 k Yeah. Had he had the right connections. He yeah. just got two packs of he beer. He didn't know the Pawn Star guys. No, he didn't know the Pawn Star guys. Man, the Coin Star guys. Have y'all ever used a Coin Star? I uh, like once, I think. Yeah. Oh, it does say what kind of beer he got. Miller High Life. Oh, uh, well. I'm not, not too that far makes off. makes sense. Yeah, I can picture him. The aluminum cans. I know what he looks like. Um, he uh, he got arrested for grand theft. Why? Um, yeah. They still have not been able to find the thirty three thousand dollars in rare coins, <laughs> which how, coin that doesn't star. disappear. I mean, how? Yeah, Coinstar has it. Coinstar doesn't have a a, a, a tunnel a, underneath public. Yeah, that just it's delivers not like it to a, a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but you got to hire somebody to sort through all those quarters. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, how it takes a while. Yeah. Well, you guys have a coin collection that you take up to those Coinstar God, machines I hope every. So. Every uh, I'll look year around. or so. Uh, no, it's always surprising. I get I have like a mason jar, what, or like a a pretty big mason jar. Try to fill it up with coins. I have like a a, a baby applesauce jar. By oh, the, that's well, a lot of coins. coins. By the time that jar's full, it's like sixty dollars in coins. I, yeah. I just throw my it coins just takes in the forever. Lawn. They're more inconvenient than anything. Next time I'm going to try to sell them off as uh, rare coins and get thirty three thousand. Long guy hates me, but no. What I don't, can you do? I don't even keep change. Hey, man. No, I, just, I flick it at people. Throws away. To mm-hmm. keep the change, babe. So rich with his gold-toed socks. Save keep the change, you filthy animal. Keep the change, babe. I got a story. <laughs> uh, Tell us about it. Yeah. So uh, it's about the uh, Heisinga family. Oh, my gosh. I know them. Yep. Yeah. Why Why would you even bring the yeah. story up? We, okay. Everybody's we familiar with the Heisingas. Like, yeah. What do they do? Heisinga. Yep. Yeah. They put... <laughs> They take their hands. Yep. They cross it over their crotch. Yep. Yeah. And they go, Heisinga. Yeah. They do. That's what they're known for. Duh. It's spelled H U I Z E N G A, but the U is silent. Oh, that's a different. That's a different uh, family. You guys are the, thinking of the Huizingas. Yeah. Huizingas. Yeah. 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 Huizingas. Sorry, Huizingas. No. Uh, the Huizinga family, um, they're from the Netherlands until a man named Harm Huizinga decided you didn't have to, to tell us. Exactly. That's textbook Netherlands. <laughs> I know. Name. Until a man named Harm Huizinga decided to move the family to the United States. To start a better life. I believe it's pronounced harm. It is. Spot on. Okay. Uh, so they relocated to Chicago, Illinois. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's there a few generations later that the topic of our story was born. You know who else from Chicago, Illinois? Mm. Obama? No. Scruff? McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Boom, baby. Whoa. I remember that commercial. Yeah. We're generational yeah. right here. Wow. Yeah, this guy. I remember that commercial. Old, old baby face cams looking uh, like, like a bite out of crime. Oh, uh, dude, what's that? <laughs> what, Obama. What y'all thinking, baby? I, was, I wasn't born yet, probably. No, that so, was... Uh... Chicago had a crime-fighting dog mm-hmm. that would literally, if you were committing a crime, he would take a bite out of you. Yeah, Justice Beaver. Yeah. What? Justice Beaver. <laughs> the Grand Petting Beaver. <laughs> Justice Beaver. <laughs> yeah. That was an otter, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> Justice Otter. Scruff McGruff would 
take a bite <laughs> and like remove your arm. What? Yeah. yeah. If you, that is true. Yeah. So if you it, were, it, it was the dare campaign, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, was it the if, same guy? Or if you it? were committing Shakira law. Yeah. Then he would just take a bite and yeah. remove your arm. You know hmm. what Shakira law is? Yeah. Whenever, wherever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. If you were committing a crime, whenever, wherever. <laughs> yep. A justice Otter. <laughs> <laughs> Justice Otter or Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652, would take a bite out of you. <laughs> so Chicago, Illinois is where the story actually begins, okay. uh, because that is where the uh, subject of our tale was born. Mm. Uh, and this uh, this guy, uh, he was born in 1937. Easy. Uh, but I want to say this. He's got the coolest name out of all the Heisingas. Tell 82. Us. Uh, so on December 29th, 1937, Wayne Huizinga was born. Ooh. Oh, come on. Wayne. Gosh, Wayne. Come it's on. so played out this what year. A name. What a lame. They said 2019 name. is the year what of the Wayne. Name. So Wayne and his parents and his mm. little sister all live. Oh, that's your wife. I'm attracted to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they all lived in a small Dutch community Uh-oh. outside she passed of away, uh, for Chicago. Sure. Until his teenage years, when his father decided to relocate the Heisingas once again to Florida. Uh, Florida. Florida. To Florida. F-M-O-F-M dot com. F-M-O-F-M dot com. They moved to Fort Lauderdale, and that's where they set up camp. Okay. Uh, Wayne Heisinga attended Pinecrest High School, where he was a member of the football team and the senior class treasurer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fancy pants. Really popular mm-hmm. guy. Really well liked. Oh, yeah. Had that comb over. I love him. He looked great. But after high school, uh, mm-hmm. Wayne knew he wanted to go into business for himself, uh-huh. but he struggled for inspiration. Inspiration. So he sat down with his grandfather, who was Harm Heisinga. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah. We follow. Who told him the story of his first business venture. <sighs> when Harm uh, immigrated <sighs> to the United States... The only thing he had to his name was his horse and his buggy. No clothes? And he had a couple pairs of clothes. Okay. Uh, Mostly onesies. (laughs) Oh, my God. I don't know why. (laughs) Uh, Uh, But he went around to his neighbor's houses, uh and he offered to carry away their garbage for the small fee of one quarter a month. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Is this like a uh, 1843 quarter? Was, yeah, 1893. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Full circle, guys. We did $33, it again. $33,000 or... We did it again. A quarter in 1890 was worth twenty six seventy five today. Hmm. I feel like... You need to get a new quarter guy. Yeah, because yeah, my quarters are worth... 33000 yeah. You got that right. Um, and so this worked very well for Harm Heisinga, uh, and it also allowed him to purchase his own home shortly after. Goodness. So when his grandson, Wayne Heisinga, hears this story, uh-huh. he's so inspired that he leaves and says, you know what? I'm going to do the exact same thing my grandfather did. So he goes to his neighbor and said, for a quarter, <laughs> yeah. I'll take where you are. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. He takes out a $5,000 loan. Oh. And he purchases his first garbage truck. Whoa. And with the money that he had left over, uh-huh. he sweet-talked a rival garbage business into selling him their older model trucks. That was a dumb move. That was a, dumb that was a smart move. move on his part. Well, yeah, yeah on his saying. part, but why would they? Yeah, and basically think, start up a, a competing business. I think it's because he's a kid, and they probably didn't think he had no faith. Because he's I, yeah, he, I think so. They were just yeah, like but this is Hazinga. This is this, this is, is Wayne Hazinga we're they, talking about. He must have used a fake name because once you hear the name Hazinga, you think trash disposal. Yeah, this is aggressiveness. <laughs> uh, well, Uh-oh. he aggressively pursued customers. Whoa, Jesus and uh, soon enough can you imagine give me your trash yeah. being aggressively pursued by the garbage man <laughs> yeah <laughs> <I'm> terrifying <laughs> soon enough he had enough money to visit the rival garbage business again but this time he wasn't looking for used trucks okay. he was looking to make an offer on the entire business whoa jeez and they're like you're nine years old buddy <laughs> yeah uh, and his rival accepted the offer. Wow. Really? So he the, bought him out? He bought completely? him out. He bought him out completely. So the guy that he went and bought old trucks from initially, mm-hmm. he's now buying his entire company. That guy probably mocked him, you know, like, oh, I'll sell you this garbage truck. Well, And so, it was literally a garbage truck? You get it? Yeah. So, no, <laughs> he, he's super aggressive going after customers. And then he's going and, he, and he's buying out his only local rival at this point. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So he's doing okay for himself. I, I imagine that the negotiation... For the truck, is that a is that a nice truck? It's a garbage truck. It's a piece of trash. Yeah, it's it's 
it's trash. And he's like, do you mean like literally like it doesn't run well? <laughs> Does it make clicking noise or, when they return? Or it's a garbage truck. Is it for trash? Don't take any dates on it. Yeah. So uh, this model of business worked very well for Wayne Huizinga. His empire spread, and whenever he would encounter a, a different rival trash business, wow. he would make them an offer, and then he would just buy them outright. Jeez. Monopoly comes to mind. He wouldn't even listen. By the time that Wayne took the company public in 1972... For his initial public offering, his IPO. He had completed the acquisition of 133 small-time garbage companies. Oh, and wait, changed, what? And, Mr. Monopoly over And changed here. the name of his company to Waste Management. Oh, oh my. This wow. guy is... People in the community are just starting trash businesses, knowing that Wayne Bazinga is going to buy it. Gonna come buy it. It's going to come buy it. So waste management. Uh, you, did you say a hundred and? He bought a hundred and thirty-three companies. Wow. Okay. And so basically, waste management. There's those. That's the white and green trucks that you see going around everywhere. I thought that everywhere. was just the general term. I thought it stood for Wayne Management. No, it's so uh, yeah. Uh, I thought it was Wayne Manor. That's my wife's job. <laughs> Wayne, uh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Management. Wayne Management. <laughs> oh. uh, so whoa, whoa, whoa. it's one of the Bazinga. largest uh, waste disposal companies in the United States. Um, it's also in, in Australia and the UK. And it's, it's massive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they pick up my trash. I literally thought Waste Management was just, just like name, a general name. A general name for government run yeah. right. waste disposal wow. because no, that name is so company. synonymous. Wayne Heisinga, Florida man. Uh, so, I hate people that are more successful than me so we're talking 99.9 percent <laughs> <laughs> of the general population because i'm sitting here in a room with you guys doing podcasts yeah so well if you're listening speak, no you're more successful speak for yourself i, I mean cameron and i are doing really well with this podcast yeah guys you're not getting the split of the cash you didn't get no. our check you have me in overalls no shirt underneath that's uh -huh. your choice you that's chose to come wearing that <laughs> no shoes in 1984 a man by the name of david cook approached Wayne uh -huh. and said that he would like his help with growing his business. What's the benefit? What's Hazinga got? So David Cook has uh, this at-home entertainment of money. business. At home. Entertainment. And he oh says, uh, I like your business, uh, your, your management. I like the way you are aggressive with your, you know, pursuing your clients. Buying everybody. I out. like the way you buy out all of your, yeah. you know, uh, rivals. And so uh, he was impressed with the way this uh, waste management company had kind of come to life. And has monopolized the entire Oh, Look business. at this. So Wayne Huizinga says, you know what? I'll help you. I'll buy into your company. Let's do it. Uh -huh. So David had a small shop that would purchase VHS movies in bulk oh. and then charge people a rental fee to borrow these movies for bang, a few bang. days. Bang, bang. Wayne Huizinga loved the idea. And he immediately bought the company. Okay. Mm -hmm. They started to grow and acquire every competing business. Jeez. And in just three years, Wayne's new company, Blockbuster Video, oh wow. my gosh. became the number one movie what rental is chain happening in, this in, in the United States. And it's still States. one of the highest selling businesses gosh. around. Guys, I just went to Blockbuster. Most successful. <laughs> it's so successful. <laughs> I got a Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was a great movie. And yeah. a Popcorn. You could. You got Popcorn with the rental. Yeah, for five ninety nine. dollars mm -hmm. Wayne Heisinga's idea. Gosh, that's amazing. This guy. So Wayne used the money from his blockbuster video venture to begin purchasing countless used car dealerships. Oh and in my gosh! In don't 1996, say there's another successful business under this guy's. The rich just keep getting richer. They really are. In 1996, he formed his third company, Auto Nation, mm. which became the largest automotive dealer in the United States. I am now disgruntled. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> After venturing into real estate. Okay, here we go. Hygiene products. <laughs> Jeez. And acquiring okay. several companies in Canada, Wayne decided to have a little fun with his portfolio. He, he couldn't oh, even leave God. Canada alone? While living in South Florida, <sighs> Wayne noticed that his favorite sports from his childhood were noticeably absent. So using his influence. Cam, what sports are those? Uh, curling. Yeah, uh, curling. Ice curling. probably is missing from South Florida. Ice fishing. <laughs> Cam's on to something. He knows I, it. I see his trend. I feel like he looked up spoilers. Curling and ice fishing. Is he, it? he started the Curling and Ice Are Fishing you? League of Miami. Nice. No. no. How uh, do you know that? The, so, the Boys and Girls Club. I was going to guess High Lie. Close. Thanks. So using his influence and his vast amount of wealth, uh -huh. Wayne Heisinga single-handedly brought professional hockey and professional baseball to the state uh -huh. of Florida. The by Devil Rays. By creating the Major League Baseball team, the Florida Marlins, oh. <laughs> and the National Hockey League team, too well either. the Florida Panthers. Oh. Mm. So he uh, 
he makes professional baseball teams and professional hockey teams just so he can be like, hey, we need more of this in yeah. South Florida. Okay, yeah. um, he then went on to purchase Fox Sports Florida okay. so wow. that he could broadcast his teams. Of course. And then for Kicks and Giggles, he purchased 25% of the Miami Dolphins. Is Kicks and Giggles the, the, yeah, I think the, that's the, the nomenclature? Yeah. Yeah, it is. When you, when you he, buy, he purchased the, the Miami Dolphins? The 25% of the Miami oh, okay. Dolphins. Wow. But it was one of those things where he just he had acquired uh, baseball teams, uh-huh. hockey teams. He yeah. wanted just like, why, why not football? He's, he's like, why wouldn't I spend He actually money? attempted to buy them outright. Um, and But the way it happened was, I guess the guy who had... 25% of the shares passed away. Okay. And he was just like, I'll buy it. He wasn't yeah. really like 100% like on board. He was just like, why not? I, know. Know. I haven't spent millions this week. I'll do it. Yeah. So he knew the future wasn't soccer in Florida. Well, yeah. Well, he, he bought 25% of the Miami Dolphins in the way that you would buy like a railroad in Monopoly. What's our Orlando, it comes up, so Orlando he, team name? Orlando City? Uh, Magic? No, the soccer one. Soccer. Oh, Orlando, Orlando City. City. Yeah. Oh, so we're the... The, the city is our theme park. Is our th- is our? I don't remember their, their mascot. mascot. Who knows? Orlando They're city. Purple. Okay. Well, they have an awesome uh, marketing team because those stickers yeah. are everywhere. The stickers are everywhere. But bro. they they didn't teach us their mascot apparently. Yeah. yeah. The the mascot is the city. The Orlando city. <laughs> he, uh, to be honest though, he probably bought into three of the worst Florida teams. Well, I mean the I best, he the best Florida sports. teams. He the best Florida teams. teams are college teams. Yeah. True. Shout out. Yeah. Florida, Florida State. Go Knowles. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Uh, later in life, Wayne Huizinga started a school for business and okay. entrepreneurship uh, at the Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Mm. He funded millions of dollars in scholarships and was subsequently named a Distinguished American by oh. the Horatio Alger Association. How do you get that? I would love to be in a Distinguished American. All right. Let's distinguish them right now. All right. Please. You are... Distinguished. distinguished. Oh, God. I've been waiting How so long feel? for this. How do you feel? I feel amazing. <laughs> I, feel, to... I might go buy a trash can or something. Oh. And then maybe this? go up to a trash truck. Yeah. Oh, whoa, trash truck. And before you, <laughs> before you know it, billions of dollars. Billions, billions of dollars. I'm going to yeah. buy a, a sports team, maybe? Yeah. Bro, um, you can take out my trash. How do you guys feel about renting DVDs and VHSs? <laughs> Sounds like a terrible... What's a DVD? Yeah. Uh... I'm hard for running DVDs. Uh, it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so when asked in 2011 about his success in Sales business. Pitches, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When asked in 2011 about his success in business, okay. Wayne Huizinga is quoted as saying, some people dream of success. Oh, gosh. While, uh, while yeah. others get out of bed and work hard to make things happen. This is what I hate the most. Successful people telling me how to be successful. Yeah. When it's they so know easy. I don't have the energy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they know I carry around the extra body weight and I don't have just the capacity. But you're looking good, though. Well, duh. You look good. these overalls yeah. and these nip rings. But uh, when, when this episode airs next week, it'll, it'll be eight days shy of the one year anniversary of Wayne Heisinger's death. Uh, Ooh, he passed away sad. March 22nd, 2018, at his home in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But at that is age. the story. Uh, one of the most successful Floridians. Wow. We're going to have to get back to unsuccessful Floridians. I was going to say, we need uh, some bad stories or horror stories this or scary stories. I look forward to this day in my week Yeah, the, to bring me up. Make me feel better right. about myself because like other people are terrible. Yeah, that's how it goes. goes. No, but you know what? Like, Greg, cut his mic. Yeah. <laughs> I came across uh, this guy's name in a New York Times article. Uh, it was talking about uh, people who shape Florida, and it was just basically saying how a lot of the image... I call it erosion, the the ocean, <laughs> yeah, uh, tectonic plates. But if you think about like the, the, the ventures this guy he kind of stepped into... Everything. Um, yeah, I mean, blockbuster video, waste management, <sighs> auto nation. I mean, like he literally, his business model was, hey, this works on a small scale. If you try to do it as well, I'm just going to buy you out. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And then make it this this giant name, this giant corporation, and it worked. Everything he touched, it just you know turned to gold. I love so. how literal his trash business name was. Waste management. Yeah, because it just sounds so official. Yeah, and and it was kind of cool though that he it, that's what his grandfather did. I mean, just but his grandfather was. I mean, it really was the same exact tactic. Like, yeah. I don't really have anything to offer. I'm going to collect this for you for a small fee. 
Yeah. I, and, I think I pay a lot more than a quarter for I'm them to pick it. up my trash, though. Well, I was thinking about that, though, because if a quarter back then really is twenty six seventy five today, I think. Wow. Um, that's about what we pay that for, like, true, utilities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. So he was kind of spot on with the pricing. Where was he dumping it? Because I'm afraid that it's dumped somewhere. Oh, don't he, he get was into landfills. It, he would dump it a block over and then go to those people and be like, hey, listen, yeah. <laughs> someone's <laughs> for really fi- making for a 50 mess cents, here. I'll pick yeah. up all that trash in your Because I got here. this trash and your trash. Mm-hmm. Let me manage this waste. Yeah. What would be a good business name for that? Huh. We'll figure it out. Trash Tramps. Trash <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then they hire a bunch of tramps. Hobos. Yeah. Uh-huh. Rail, oh, okay. rail riders. Yeah. yeah. Lady. Rail riders. They would put them in their bindles and yeah. carry them away. There you go. Well, it's been a good week. Trashtramps.com. Wait, that don't go, don't <laughs> don't go, go there. That. Don't go we there. We don't know what's there. <laughs> no, don't. We have not verified that. <laughs> Do not go there. Trash tramps. Uh, me on trash tramps. Who's who's taking us out this week? Greg? No. No. Greg, Greg's it's got to be shot. Cam. Cam's got the golden voice. He does have that golden voice. And Cam, take us home. Beeswax. Let's go home. Let's go home. <laughs>